Spanning decades, Delroy Lindo has always been a powerful presence on screen in films such as Get Shorty, Malcolm X and The Cider House Rules. Well, recently, he's receiving critical praise for his complex and intense portrayal as a veteran who loves former President Oops. Donald Trump well, in Spike all Lee's The Five Bloods, Are with all signs that? pointing to, his, to him receiving uh, maybe his first Oscar nomination next month. And uh, please to say, Delroy joins us now. Good morning. Very good morning to you. Uh, good morning. Watched the film yesterday. Absolutely incredible. Uh, you play the character so well. He's so complex. I mean, how was it playing uh, a character called Paul, who is a Trump supporter? Probably something that in real life you wouldn't do. I am not a Trump supporter. You are correct. <laughs> um, th that was one aspect that was initially difficult, uh, just in terms of my own politics. But there were so many other aspects to Paul that were incredibly compelling. You mentioned the complexity, the emotional complexity, the journey that Paul um, uh, undergoes in the film was really, really compelling. And, and, and so a lot of it was in the script. Um, and it was then my job to just excavate all of that. And it was incredibly challenging, but really, really enervating to do. And, and it's, it's a very important story to tell. I know you're quite passionate about telling those untold kind of black stories in history. Um, and, you know, at the time of the Vietnam War, uh, the black population in the US was 12 percent. Yet the veterans or Vietnam, uh, the veterans, you know, who were on the front line uh, were actually 30 percent. So black people actually oh, overrepresented massively during the Vietnam War. That's right. That's correct. And it speaks to, um, I think, that particular statistic speaks to a couple of things. It speaks to um, the love of country and the commitment that a lot of these young men had to go and fight that war. And secondly, it speaks to the fact that a lot of them had no other option to go but to, to go fight. And the third aspect is, as happened with two of my cousins, they were drafted and they had no choice. So it's a tragedy all the way around. I mean, when I watched the film, the, in particular your character, we see the raw anguish that he goes through. We see the emotion. It is a, such a powerful performance. And another thing that stood out for me is, is watching you in action with Chadwick Boseman, who, you know, sadly is no longer with us. And... That was a really emotional part. I know we've got a clip of the film where you share that scene together, which is just an incredibly powerful scene with the emotion that comes off it, and you share a hug from that. I mean, let's let's take a look at that um, that clip now. It's so sad, yeah. bearing in mind what happened. You know, w it, watching that back now. I mean, how do you feel actually watching it? I mean, at the time, I'm sure you didn't know that you were in a way, kind of saying goodbye, that was probably your, your, your final hug, because, as we know, Chadwick Boseman was very um, quiet about his cancer diagnosis, wasn't he? Yeah. Um, <laughs> it was actually not... It was the final hug in the film, but as I've said to various of your colleagues, that scene was actually Chadwick's first day of work on the film. Uh, and it was extraordinary that he was able to work as he did with the intensity, with the concentration, with the commitment to the work. Um, after having been in Thailand, I don't know, a, a few days, I had, I had been working on the film for f approximately five or six weeks. He had just gotten there. So it was pretty extraordinary that he was able to um, apply himself to that, that particular penultimate scene between, between our characters in the way that he did. Mm. How His were you... Seeing, Sorry, I was uh, going to say, I, how, how would you remember him? Because I think for us watching as well, it just seems like he had such a bright future ahead of him. He leapt off the screen. He was, he was a charismatic actor, wasn't he? He was. Um, uh, obviously, a lot of people have asked me about, about Chadwick. And the, the term that I have been using to, de to describe him, uh, he was full of grace. He was full of grace as a, as a man, as a human being, as an actor. Um, 
his grace, his graciousness, his gracefulness, um, grace. And if we can talk about your career, I mean, you've been massively successful, loved you in Gone in 60 Seconds, um, but you're actually, Thank you. you're actually a Brit. You were born in Lewisham. And I don't think many people actually know that. Um, what, what was your time like when you were here? Mm. Um, <laughs> oh, okay. <you're> right. <laughs> Let it out. Let's go. We want to hear now. <laughs> Yeah, right. Um, how much time? We have like two minutes left, right? <laughs> <laughs> your, um, your, when I did the pre-interview with your, one of your colleagues, uh, I guess a few hours yesterday, um, she asked me a similar question. And um, it's, it's complicated for me to answer that question just because, um, because it's complicated. Um, th there, there were lots of things that I learned about black British history after I left the UK. And as I learned, as I was learning, <clears throat> I mentioned a book called Staying Power by a man named Peter Fryer. Um, I, I referenced the work of Stuart Hall, cultural theorist Stuart Hall, people like Paul Gilroy. And I, in reading their works, and they were not the only people that I read, um, but in reading their works, it put into a much sharper relief the history of black people in England, and therefore gave me an added understanding of my own time in England. Um, and frankly, I'm still disseminating that for myself. Um, I've been working on a, a script, a screenplay about my mom, her time in England, and I'm also adapting it into a, a book. And, and as I make progress with those projects, my hope is that it will further increase my understanding of my own, of my own life, my own time in, in England. And do you think you would, would be the actor you are today if you had actually stayed here in England? Absolutely not, um, because I simply would not have had the opportunities. I would not have had the. I would not have had the career. I would not be sitting here at three a.m. talking to you all. Um, <laughs> um, I would not. I would not be sitting here speaking to you. Um, uh, I would not be in this position, professionally and personally had I stayed in England. Um, absolutely not. Well, listen, we're very grateful that yeah. you did stay up until 3 a.m. in the morning to speak to us. It's been I great to talk to you. Thank you so much. Yeah. And as I, we were I saying, it's like, an incredible performance. I feel like there's a documentary in there uh, with you coming back to Lewisham, talking about your, your, your experience. Um, absolutely, absolutely. There are lots of stories yet to be told. Thank you so much for having me and God bless. Thanks I really very appreciate much. it. And Thank listen, you. We, I know there's, you know, Oscars and BAFTAs talk and we'll be keeping our fingers crossed yeah. for you because it is an incredible. It, it will be well deserved. And you can watch the Five Bloods on Netflix now. Yeah.